Jonathan Horowitz is with us, and as I mentioned, uh, he's been with us throughout the, the Triple Crown, the historic Triple Crown, and racing is going on at, at Arapaho Park. I want to talk to you about two things, though. For the guy who doesn't really know wrestling but wants a day at the track, the Marx Brothers were the first to glamorize it, a day at the races, and it was a great movie for people who were as old as I am, could see in the 30s or whatever it was. But <laughs> Explain to people what, I mean, they, they go out there and come to, I don't know, what would you recommend to someone who has never been out to Rappahoe Park, how they should approach it the first day? So the thing that I see about the horse races, most sporting events are sort of tied to a seat and you go and you just observe what's going on. With horse racing, it's a very active experience. So whenever people come out to the track for the first time, I encourage people just to make it their own. You can go right up to the finish line and see the horses up close. You can go to the paddock and see the horses getting saddled, the jockeys and the trainers giving instructions. That's basically the locker room. You have tremendous access at the races. And a big thing is being able to place a bet, whether it's just $2, you're into the action because your money then goes on the tote board so you have an influence on what's displayed on the scoreboard and if you ever have any questions about that you can go up to all kinds of people who are at Arapaho come up to the announcers booth and we try and make it as fan friendly as possible. I, I think that's a great point because there are times even though I've been following the race tracks for 40, 50 years that I go up and I'll go I want to make this bet can you help I mean they're not going to tell you numbers, but they'll tell you how to make the bet. Oh, I want a trifecta and I want to, I want to box eight horses. People actually will explain to you how to do that. A lot of people are afraid. Well, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't know enough about the track that I, 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 all I'm going to bet is win or show. You know, my mother would go and she'd bet $2 to show because she didn't really understand the intricacies of it. Is that a fair statement? Oh, absolutely, because horse racing really has a language unto itself furlong for, for the distances. And so I try and explain that, you know, furlong is how the races are measured. A furlong is an eighth of a mile. Um, when Chicago was planning its city, they put eight blocks in a mile. So I just say, look, a six furlong race is like running six blocks um, in exact at picking the first two horses in the correct order. So it's something that is a different language, but if there's people there to explain it, um, at Arapo or if you're at the Celtic watching the off-track betting, then you're able to grasp it pretty quickly and, and feel a sense of accomplishment when you can be really involved in the action. Our professional, he picked the right horse three times, and that horse won three times. I picked three times, and my horse lost three times. Our Racing Insiders, <laughs> to the surprise of no one. Our Racing Insiders brought to you by the Celtic Tavern, my favorite place in town. Uh, you go to the Celtic Tavern, they have off-track betting, they have 8,000 different whiskeys that you can try. They have, what, what's interesting to me is every month they'll have a, a tequila tasting. You know, some places will let you taste sliders or something. They will do, and then they bring in someone from the company who explains to you the history, just as you do with horses, they, they do that. So I, I really invite you to go over there, have the fish and chips. I've taken people up there and I go, the best fish and chips in town, because they're authentic. They actually brought the Celtic Tavern board by board, people don't know this, from Ireland. The bar was built in Ireland and shipped over here. That's one of the amazing, when you go in, you actually enter into the world of, of being in Ireland. That's a, that, you know that. Oh, it's an there. amazing place. Actually, they're coming out to a rap hole week from there. Sunday, and if you're in the downtown area, they're providing a free party bus from the Celtic. It's called Paddies and Ponies, so it'll be an Irish <laughs> day at the races uh, and coming I'm out gonna, to Arapaho. So I'm going to do that. Not only if you go to the Celtic do you feel like you're in Ireland, but maybe when you come to Arapaho a week from Sunday, you'll feel like you're at the Curra or watching the Irish Derby. Final, final question. When are we going to see American Pharaoh again? That's a big question. Thank goodness we are going to see him. Um, there are a few races on the table. I think the one that it looks like the most logical choice is the Haskell Stakes, and that's at Monmouth Park in New Jersey hmm. for a few reasons. The owner of American Pharaoh, the Zayat family, they were from New Jersey. Trainer Bob Baffert has a great history in the race, winning that race seven times. 
American Pharaoh is a speed horse and the track at Monmouth tends to favor speed horses. So that's probably the most logical choice. And it's yeah. been a logical choice for, for triple crown sure. horses. And it makes all, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's logical, except for the fact that it's in New Jersey. <laughs> Jonathan Horowitz uh, in the Celtic Tavern. And thanks for always joining us. I, I enjoy being with you every week.